sure glad that you are here with us. In just a moment, we're going to visit with Todd Horowitz at Bubba Trading, but let's lead off here with the export inspection numbers and what they uh, may mean or may not mean to the market. 769,390 metric ton of corn this week were inspected for shipment, and that's ahead of last week's 562,000. Sorghum was up to 77,500 and some change. That was higher than last week's 18,000. But soybeans, last week, 1.37 million metric ton was inspected. This week, uh, a little over half of that, uh, 603,000. And then the uh, wheat, 523,713. Last week, 435,000 and some change. So uh, if you look at the numbers compared to last year, well, we're lower than we were last year for corn, but we have inspected more Milo uh, for this year, almost double. Uh, in the soybeans, it's higher as well. And the uh, wheat is higher than last year. So uh, on the year basis, some of those are doing pretty good. Not the case for the corn. No surprise there. Let's look at the futures, and then we'll visit with Todd about the futures and what he thinks about this coronavirus factoring into this market. March corn down three and three quarters. The December down two and a half at 391 and a half. Soybeans for March up three and three quarters at 885 and three quarters. The September up three and three quarters. Pressure on the wheat market also. March Chicago down five at 553 and three quarters. March Kansas City wheat down one at 471 and a half, and Minneapolis wheat on that March contract, which is the front month. The uh, Minneapolis wheat on the lower side by uh, about anywhere from two to two and three quarters cents. Todd Horowitz, as I mentioned, Bubba Trading here. All right, Todd, this coronavirus continues to uh, get worse, and I know that even when this got started uh, two weeks ago or so, you were saying at that time that this really could and really does have an impact on these markets. Well, it certainly does, John. Good morning. You know, when you look at, look at if, we, if we stop shipping altogether, which is basically what's happening, and even the people that are buying for China through the back door, they can't ship to China either, so it becomes a problem. All it is doing is it's adding to a well-oversupplied market to begin with. So what we need is we need this to break through so that we can finally see uh, some purchasing coming in because obviously there's need and eventually this will break down. Now, again, there is pretty good action in corn, although it's lower, holding about 380. Soybeans, this is not a very good dead cat bounce as, as, as far as I'm concerned. And we expected to sell a little bit, but we should find some support here as well too soon. Aha, uh -huh. I noticed that you called soybeans a bounce. So you think we could be somewhat range bound for right now then? Well, I think that you got to watch 890 on the upside and 860 on the downside. And if 860 comes, you better watch out for 840. I, you know, again, I'd like to say that I, I'm confident that they found a bottom. I'm not. I, I, would, I, I, I hope so, because I love to be long grains. I don't like to be short them. But I would think that, you know, again, we'll watch 8, 860, 890. And if either one of those break out, that's the way we're going. Okay, uh, your thoughts on crude oil and the livestock. We're going to do that when we come back from the break. Stay with <laughs> us here on the Market News Report. All right, uh, let's look at what's going on over here in the futures market for the uh, livestock as we get started here. And right now we go over here to the February live cattle. We're down 88 at 120.45. The April down 122 and the June is down 83. So uh, weakness there and weakness in the feeders as well, but not to the same extent. March down 20 at 135. April down 70 and the May is down 75. Then in the hogs, February down 75 at 56.35. April down 80, the May down 22. And then we start to see a little bit of strength in the June and July. Um, so, Todd, what do you think of the livestock market here? And as you put it in perspective of this coronavirus? Well, I think obviously that'll have the same issues about get, about exporting. I, I think that, again, we, we've got some pretty weak prices here and they don't they don't look great. OK, now, I think that, you know, hogs are up limit on Friday, down a little bit. They, no surprise. Let's see how they finish today. Feeders are holding up rather well here at about the 135. Uh, fats, I'm still a little bit concerned about it. Again, I think they're going to find a bottom. You know, obviously, there's always prices that we find. I think they're probably close. But for right now, they look like they have a little bit of room to go to the downside still. 
Do you feel that if we would start to see maybe the signs of a little bit of a bottom that some of these buyers that got out earlier may want to come back to this market thinking that this market still has some strength to go? Well, I, I, listen, I think there's a lot of strength somewhere. And it, it depends where it comes from. And, and I think what will happen is, is, is typically what will happen is you've got a lot of shorts out there right now. And I think the shorts will get squeezed. And then we'll get some buyers to follow that in. So I think that's going to definitely happen. The only level is what level does it come from? That's a good point. I want to visit with you about crude oil. Uh, you and I talk about this from time to time. And if you're a producer and you're already looking at all of the, the uh, spring field work that needs to be done and planning, well, it's time to start looking at some of these costs. And uh, look at this number here in front of the March crude oil contract, 49 69 <laughs> Todd, you always said we were going to back, go back down and visit the 40s. Uh, we're down 64 cents right now a barrel. Uh, that should come as no surprise to you. But what about OPEC? Weren't they kind of rattling the uh, the cage here just a little bit, saying that they would uh, maybe cut some of their um, some of their output and some of their production, and because of the coronavirus and because of demand? Well, John, I'll put it this way: It's nice to be the biggest exporter in the world, which we are. And certainly, we can create enough oil here now to not have an issue. So OPEC no longer holds the United States hostage when it comes to oil. And you're, listen, the rumors have been around. You would have thought you might have seen a bounce. And I was expecting a nice dead cat bounce to sell some more crude. To me now, it looks like probably the mid-40s is the next level on the downside. No surprise that it bounces a buck or two, but I think it's going still considerably lower. Okay, Todd, thanks a lot. Always good to visit with you. All right, let's see what the uh, cutouts, the brand new information for the beef and the pork cutouts are doing here today. On the beef side, uh, we go over here and see where that choice uh, beef cutout is on the lower side by a dollar and two pennies, 209.10. The selects down 10 cents at 203.99. Then for the pork cutouts, well, the carcasses are up 337. The loins are the only one that are lower. They're down 73, but the ham's up 374. <laughs> a big jump in the belly market, fourteen dollars and fifty three cents higher. <laughs> Always big jump, big, big moves in the big belly moves, market. Big moves, that's right. All right, thank you. Appreciate that, John.